Hello and welcome to day three of Unveil Your Hidden Powers, Transform Your Shadows into Strengths. Today we're going to talk about a topic that is not one of my better topics, vulnerability. You know, I teach vulnerability, I help people heal their shadows, but I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie, I have trouble with vulnerability as well. I have so much trouble with it, I can barely pronounce it. I think a lot of women, women leaders have issues with it. Um, they feel like it's a sign of weakness. Um, you'll be exposed as being not good enough. There's all kinds of signs to it. it it's self-doubt. So we try to hide our vulnerabilities or expose it only when we need to. And it is something that is a goal for me in 2023 to really work on being more vulnerable out there instead of keeping it within. So when you face self-doubt, insecurities, and challenges that, that will impact your leadership, don't run from your vulnerability because for a lot of women, this is your superpower. It, it makes you, it helps you be more compassionate. It helps you be more understanding. And it kind of helps you release your emotions. So let's talk about the three main types of vulnerability, you know, and how you can kind of recognize. And the first one is emotional vulnerability. Women all the time, women leaders are all the time being said, oh, you're so emotional. I get, you know, I have, I've actually had people tell me that I'm a crybaby. And it's true. I'm a big crybaby. If something's emotional, I will cry. I've, I've cried at our conferences. I've cried at workshops. I've cried at board meetings. I'm a crybaby. But I allow that vulnerability to show because it's also my superpower. It's like saying, you guys, I have feelings. You know, you can't always say mean things without it hurting people's feelings. So be open and honest about your emotions. Recognize when, they, when they're when they happening and don't hold back. Now, I'm not saying you need to sob on the table or you need to run up in somebody and say, you hurt my feelings. I'm just saying, be a little more open with it. Also is relational um, vulnerabilities. And these are your deep connections. It's forming true, meaningful relationships. Not the kind of relationships that you have that, you know, it's good to, if I have a relationship with this person, I'll get them to do what I want. Those aren't meaningful relationships. Those are manipulative relationships. Those are destructive relationships. You need to form meaningful. So when you're trying to coach one of your team members that you legitimately care, and so you have that, um, that relational vulnerability to show them who you truly are. And that and it's okay to be like that. Now I'm not saying you need to, again, go around and hug and kiss all your employees or when you're counseling an employee that may not have done things properly, you know, but you still have to have a softer side. And then intellectual vulnerabilities. I spent a lot of time trying to be the smartest person in the room. If you would look at my bookcases, you'd be like, are you kidding me with all those books? Because growing up, I was not the smartest kid in the room. I was perceived as special needs because I had a speech impediment, which I, I forget what they call it now. It's not speech impediment, language something. Anyway, because I had a speech impediment, so I've always struggled to prove that I was the smartest person in the room. Well, when you try to be the smartest person in the room, you're truly the most obnoxious person in the room. And that's just kind of how that, that works out. So acknowledge you have gaps in knowledge. I am not the best financial person. I am not the one to sit down and talk to about debits and credits because I will never, ever, ever understand. And I tell people this all the time. I have 24 credits in different forms of accounting, accounting one, accounting two, financial accounting, tax accounting, yada, yada, yada. I still don't know how you can be a debit here and a credit here, but you're the same thing. It makes no sense to me. You got to be one or the other. You can't float around and be both things. And it's the weird accounting thing that they've started. Um, you've got to be willing to seek you know, guidance. And I'm going to talk about this more, but women leaders that have vulnerability, you need to have a growth mindset. A lot of women have a fixed mindset, A plus B equals C. And then there's people like me that A plus B could equal C, but how about if we thought I could equal F? Because if we move this way and grow, then this will happen. You have to be open. You know, I've talked before about how our national association is having their conference here in Phoenix at the end of April on the exact same dates as ours. Now, I did pout around for a couple of days, I'm not going to lie, but then I thought, okay, what's the best solution? So I moved ours up a couple of weeks to the first week of April. And then I sat and thought about it and thought, you know what? I bet if we moved to June, 
we could get more concessions from the hotel and offer more things to our members in return. That's a growth mindset. It's like, okay, if we move to June, yes, I'm going to run into summer vacations and it is hotter than beep in Phoenix, Arizona, but how can we work around it? What amazing things can we do that we wouldn't be able to do in April because of the expense? And we've been in April for years. And I, you know, I look and think, okay, for the money we spend in April, what could we get in June for our members? Could we get you know, free drink tickets? Could we have you know, better food at lunches and dinners and all that? So that's a growth mindset. So step into the growth mindset. Okay, now let's talk about how you heal your vulnerabilities. How you, how you look at the shadows, because vulnerabilities are typically shadows. They've come up in your childhood. Um, you, might have, you might have been raised around a very emotional parent. You're like, I'm not going to be emotional like that. Or, or you had parents that had no respect for emotionals. Emotionals, no respect for emotions. You know, I have had a cousin whose father was not into emotions at all. He felt they were pointless. And so she grew up not really having a lot of emotions, and she struggled with that. So it's your view of emotions. I mean, you can also be the person that every time somebody looks at you or you're crying or you're telling everybody your life story. And I ran into those too. They're oversharers and they're on the other spectrum. There's a nice happy medium. So you have to look at the shadows. How do you view emotions? How do you view relations? And how do you view intellectual vulnerabilities? Because that will tell you what the shadow is. So whatever one you think and thought, you know, you, when I was told those, you're like, I'm not doing the emotion thing, never in a million years. Look within what, what is holding you back. And again, I'm not saying you need to go out and cry in front of everybody, but what's holding you to hold all your emotions within? Because again, there's a shadow hiding there. So let's look at how you can begin to heal these. The first thing, the first way to heal shadows is through self-awareness. It's paying attention to your reaction to things. Um, looking at what people reflect back to you that you don't like. You know, you're in a conversation at a meeting and, you know, you have an employee who's extremely emotional and they're, you know, they're telling you all this stuff and you're thinking, God, why, what is wrong with these people? That's when you might need to look within and say, okay, if that bothers me, what's wrong with it? Or you get in front of somebody and you think, man, what a dummy. How can they not know this stuff? That could be a shadow. People will always reflect back to you your shadows. You just have to pay attention to what people are saying that anger you. I mean, there are other times people could be saying things and you just look at them and think, oh, okay, because there's no shadow there. So it's not reflecting back. So kind of pay attention to that. It's even when you're watching TV and you're thinking, what a pooch. What is that person talking about? You know, oh my God, I can't stand. They're so weak. Or they're, you know, what a wuss. Or any of those, you know, verbs that we use to describe people. That's typically a shadow that you got tapped within that you need to, to take time and look at. Because as you become more vulnerable and more open to yourself and more open to the world, it is like a blue rose opening up. See, look, wrong, where they at? Over there, a <laughs> blue, blue rose opening up. It's, it's you're opening up and you, it's, you have more color in your world. You have more love in your world. You have more self-love. You have a lot more self-love. And as somebody that spent a lot of time not liking themselves, a lot of time. Stepping into self-love was so weird to me. It was like, wow, huh. I'm not just talking the talk. I really do love myself. I'm not just saying that. So that's all part of the healing process. So you kind of want to look at self-reflection. Have a journal. I've, I have a journal. I left it actually behind me, I think. Um, write in a journal how you feel. Let your emotions out. Now, I, I was so closed off, and I'm still kind of like this, where I don't necessarily want people to read my journal, so I don't leave it lying around. I kind of put it somewhere that my husband would look at and just toss it to the side and be like, I already know you. We've been married a long time. So do some journaling. Um, Self-compassion. Look at your self-talk. Is your self-talk filled with love, compassion, or is your self-talk, what a pooch. I can't believe I was that dumb. How did I say that stupid thing? How did I, you know at lunch spill my water or how did I you know get lost going to lunch to a restaurant I've been to a million times there's all kinds of things self-compassion ladies self-love women leaders have a tendency to give so much out there I see them giving so much that you know when I sit down with them it's like you've got to fill your own bucket you've got to take time for you 
You can't be on call 24-7. You can't let, let your team suck your energy and not replace it because you end up as a broken, empty vessel. And you go home on a weekend and you have drinks or you have you know, ice cream or hot fudge sundaes or chocolate chip cookies or whatever, trying to refill your vessel. But it's, it's energy healing you need to do, emotional healing you need to do. So take time and journal. Take time for self-compassion. Go get a massage. Sit by yourself in a quiet room. If you have kids, just say, you know, I just need 20 minutes. Just give me time. At your office, close your door, light a candle, and just breathe. Just take time to breathe. Now, you also have to be aware of potential challenges because as you go on a healing journey, as you start looking at stuff, the universe will reveal things to you because the universe is on your side. The universe wants you to heal these vulnerabilities because they want you to step up and be a, a more whole person. So your, le your lesson for, um, for today is to get out a journey, journey, get out a journal and write, when do you have emotional vulnerabilities? When was the last time that you sat there and you thought, oh, brother, do I have to listen to all these emotions? Or you sit there and everybody's laughing and you're kind of like tearing up. Write down those moments. Write down when, you know, when maybe you're not fostering the most meaningful connections. When you're kind of going to events to, to be seen, to say hello, but you're keeping it shallow. People think you're bonding, but you're not. You know you're not. You're keeping it shallow. How can you step into that? An intellectual, um, work on a growth mindset and not just at work. I, you know, I, I've coached women that have the best growth mindset when it comes to work. They're on it. I mean, they have a vision like that, but when it comes to their personal life, it is fixed. It is A plus B plus C. It's black and white. There's no um, middle ground because they have that middle ground as being vulnerable. And although ladies were not thrilled with vulnerability, it changes your life when you're willing to let yourself breathe and be to become your most powerful self, to become the best version of yourself, and to also present to the world the best version of you, to serve as an example to those around you that you can be whoever you wanna be you can become the best version of you. You've just got to put the work in to heal the shadows. So I hope this helped you guys. If you have any questions, put it in the comments below. Um, this is day three. Also, as a side note, for those of you that stuck all, all the way to the end, thank you very much. Um, I've been posting links on my Facebook group, and then I had some of my LinkedIn fans, not fans, that's not a good way to say it, but people that follow me say, hey, why isn't it over here on LinkedIn? Why do we have to go to your group and get approved? You know, just put it over here on LinkedIn. And then when you put longer tapes over on Facebook, you have to start at YouTube. So moving forward, it'll be on my LinkedIn page, Karen Barno. It'll be on my YouTube page, Karen Barno. And it'll be in my um, group circle of women leaders. I hope this helped you guys. Please, if you have any questions at all, put it in the comments below. I want to help 1 million, 2 million, 3 million women heal their shadows so that you can become the best, best version of yourself possible. Because when you die and you're standing in front of the pearly gates, whatever your belief is, I believe that we stand in front of the universe and we watch a, a video of who we could have been. And <clears throat> this is who we could have been. And this is who we are. I want them to be so close together that I look up and say, damn good job, Karen. Have a great day. And again, here's to you finding your whoop, blue rose.